Uh, gas in the grid installer, um, Bulldog, remote starter keyless entry. I had bought on my other video, I had uh, found it at the thrift store for $5. If you go back and look at my other video, I talk about uh, the type of alarm, I mean, type of remote starter keyless entry it was. It's an old find, basically something that they don't make no more. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm going to start. Uh, breaking the dash down so to get started uh, you want to get up under here up under the bottom start with these bolts right here you can see it right here is one two three I believe they eight millimeter so gonna start breaking those down Usually I use a ratchet, but it's just easier to use the drill a lot faster. It's a little compact drill. A lot easier. Alright. Get a little caught up in front of it. It's a little hung up in there. Ah, sometimes the clips get stuck. You have to force them up out of there. See that? Just the clip kind of stuck. Up in there, pop that out of there. There we go. Because sometimes these clips right here get stuck. And guys, if you're gonna do a, a job like on a customer car or you know, or your personal car, you know, you'd like to take care of it, don't use a, a screwdriver. What I just did to pop that out, the reason why I did it because I'm selling the vehicle, you know, to make a buck. I'm not pretty much trying to baby it, but I would just suggest using panel poppers or they call, I call them panel poppers, but they, I think they be, they call upholstery removers. You can get them at Home Depot, Menards and stuff like that. And the end look like a fork and it's a lot smoother and they got a handle like a screwdriver, but the end curve like a fork. And the, the edges are not sharp, it's a lot smoother. So when you go to pry a panel off, it'll be easier and it won't leave a mark or you won't risk breaking it. But like I said, I did this because I'm planning on selling this vehicle. It's a 2001 Ford Windstar. I'm just doing this to make a little bit of money. So I'm just gonna throw this remote start on here and that's why you see me using this um, the screwdriver. So I just don't want nobody in the video be like, ah. Oh, you tear stuff up, you should use this and that, but yeah, I'm just gonna tell you the, the, the truth. You know, I wouldn't do that. I did it because like I said, I'm selling the vehicle. No, but anywho, let me get on with this remote starter. And then you got the metal plate right here. I'm gonna take these out of here. Two bolts out of here. Okay. And basically, that exposes all your wires. You know, at the end, I gotta, I gotta run and get a Phillips screwdriver, something thin enough to fit up in here. We're gonna be taking this off, cause like I said, you gotta put that, when you do the remote start, you gotta um, run that ring up around here and run it down. So this cover needs to be off. I'm, um, I gotta run back in the house and get a screwdriver. Uh, something enough to fit up in here and take these screws out of here and then I'll be right back okay guys I got the screwdriver and I'm gonna take the uh, I believe it's one two three screws up in there so it's hard for me to hold the camera and try to uh, take this stuff off so I'm uh, oh yeah another thing too for this to come down, 
after you take the screws off, you want to unscrew this off. All you have to do is just unscrew that lever and it comes right out. And you see this there? It just screws right back in there. So it's no big deal. And another thing, before I like to get started and wire my kit up, you want to take everything down so you know where everything is. You want to know where you want to put your box set. You want to find all your wires that you need for the car, like your brake wire, your parking light, you know, your factory disarm wire. You want to find the um like the accessory, the ignition, everything you need to uh that you're gonna be utilizing to uh for your remote start. So you want to make sure you find all that first and find that where you want to put your box because you don't want to hook everything up. <clears throat> running wires across here and then you go to put your box up and you can't because it's wires tucked out here then it's sloppy you know find a spot for your box first for your most started box where you're gonna put it at. then find all your wires and then that way you know how to wire up your kit because if you just go ahead and wire your kit up before and then you got wires over here wires over there wires back there then you gotta have wires all over the place that way you want to route your wires accordingly so let me finish taking this down and then um, I'm gonna show you like the wires the wires <clears throat> see I did so many of this, these vehicles I kind of know the wires by heart <clears throat> but I'm show you how you could test maybe test for the wires <clears throat> and you also can go on a site called bulldogsecurity.com type in a year make and model of your car and they'll kind of give you some hints of where the wire at you know, sometimes it's not a hundred percent correct. Nothing is a hundred percent correct because you can, <clears throat> I had, you can have three of the same year vehicles and one of those may have a different color wire that posed to be the uh, same thing. Like it could be <clears throat> like I had one with the door locks, right? All, I did, I said I did like 10 of them vehicles. All the door locks was in the same spot, same color. On this vehicle, it's like the dealer must have ran out of wire color or did something and it was a different color. So <clears throat> you do got to keep that in mind. So it's best to know what to look for and where to look for and how do the door lock works and what type of door locks you have. You know, because you have five wire, you got type uh, B door locks, you know, <clears throat> and things of that nature. But you can look that up online, like the type of, uh, to see what type of door locks you have. But you know, so, um, yeah, I'm going to put this camera down for a minute and then, um, I'm going to get everything ready. I'm going to start, uh, looking for my wires and stuff and, um, uh, yeah. Okay, guys, I removed the, uh, the bottom of the panel, panel up under here. And this is the, um, you're gonna take this off. Uh, let me go back, put this back on. See this right here? This little um, thing for the key. You just use a, a screwdriver, or panel panel remover, just pop this plastic piece out, it plop, pops off. Just be careful with it. It pops right off, so. And this is what I was talking about. You see the ignition ring? And then you see this little box around the thing? It's for the key because the key has the chips in it for the anti theft. So that ring need to be wrapped around the tumbler and then hooked to the box so the remote start so to send that signal to it. So um Yeah. Basically I get everything um broke broken down. You know, and like I said, you can check for the wire colors on that on that site I told you about. I put it I post it up in the link. But uh, just be careful, you know, doing this. Pay attention. If you feel like you don't know what you're doing, then I suggest you take it to a professional. But I'm going to kind of show you guys, you know, I'm going to show you where the wire is at, what to look for, to kind of, you know, the gadget a little bit. You know, uh, like I said, though, nothing's 100%. Just because you go online and you see the color codes for this and that, something might have changed with that year vehicle you know i had a vehicle that it said needed a uh anti-theft bypass and the, and the light on the dash is flashing but i hooked the remote start up and i hadn't even plugged the um the um 
the anti-theft module up yeah and his, and his vehicle remote started and was working fine and like i said i've done a bunch of them vehicles in the past and it wouldn't start without the bypass module and then some type of that vehicle you know it's like nothing's the same people make mistakes i don't care if it's coming from the dealership or where it's coming from something's gonna could be off it's not all of them you can make a hundred cars something's gonna be off or different about them vehicles so just keep in mind to you know pay attention you know make sure you use tape make sure you strap your wires up appropriately you know and solder if you want to i use the poking map uh wrap uh method you no know, that's when you you, you uh splice the wire you spread them and then you stick the uh, wire through there you wrap it and tape it tightly i like to do that because solder can get messy and then you want to take Sometimes you want to take this stuff out the vehicle, then you have to cut the wire. I just don't like soldering, you know. And I know some people may I like soldering a T taps, you know. The best way for me is the is the is the uh poke and wrap method. That seemed to work for me. I've been doing this for um for a while, for years, and I never had, you know, I had vehicles come back ten years later and, and they stuff was still I mean they may need a battery or the brain may went out but never issue from not soldering never had an issue like i said the poking rap rap method i will show you that but let me get to splicing my wires and checking out my wires and then i'll turn the video back on for you guys all right hey what's going on guys i wanted to show you for a second how you can find your um the door locks or your um you know your wires i just want to show you a little bit of it okay now <clears throat> what i got right here is called a test light also use a multimeter too i prefer using a multimeter but you know this is all i have right now plus this is easier um i want to take the clip to ground <laughs> you want to go up under here and usually you have type b locks which is negative i don't know if you can see that um right here is a, a light green with a yellow and a light green with a uh, orange on your door locks and you can tell that you got the door the door locks because when you hit when you take the test light to negative and then you uh probe you got type b locks the, the locks will jump see you hit your unlock then you hit your lock but of course you got to splice into them i just know about hard you know what colors that they are on the, on the fort but you know you also could just like they sell the test lights with the uh well this one had it on i just took it off it got the probe where you could like probe the wires and test it but remember take the other side to ground and then you put it here and on the um the brake light on the forts on this one it's at the, the switch above the brake paddle right here i don't know if you can see that is uh red with a light green red with a light green stripe now you can um like i said the test light is still the other side is to the ground you touch this right here you touch the wire i already i already had spliced into it touch it right here and when you press the press the yeah so when you press the um it's kind of hard to hold this and Work this test light. So I got to find me somebody to hold the camera. Oh. I'm gonna drop the test light. Now on that break, if you take the test light to it, like you hold the test, you touch that, touch that wire that I had spliced it to, the metal part, and then when you press it, the, the test light light up. Press the brake, it light up. Press the brake and light up. That's how you know you got your uh, brake light, which is a positive. So, yeah. Let me get these. Let me put this camera down and get these other wires spliced into. Oh, yeah. Another thing about the poking wrap method. Now, you see, I don't know if you can, if you can see up there. Now, you see how I open that wire up right there? That's how I usually like to do mine. And then... When I put the wire and I put it through that loop, through the hole, I close it and then I wrap it up real tight and then I tape it tight. 
You know, there's easier way to do it than, than the soldering because some spots like up high, you can't get to the solder and you burn yourself. The solder can get real bit messy. And then plus if they want to take the alarm out, they could easily just like pull, take it out, you no, know, tape it back up and no problem, no messy solder and all stuff like that. But not nothing to get soldered though. I just don't like doing it. I've been doing it this way forever. This is called the uh the poking wrap. So, you no, know, something like the military style. So, um, yeah. Let me get these other wires ready, and then I'll turn the video back on, because it's kind of hard to do this, explain. I'm trying to hold the test light, splice wires. No, I'm, so, doing it the best way I can. So, um, yeah, let me get back to you. All right, guys, I got the um, these wires spliced. I didn't splice into my... Um, 12 volt yet. I like to do that last because I don't want nothing accidentally touching. So, um, you see how I opened the, uh, open all these wires up? So I put my wire through there, wrap it. That's how I like to do it. So, um, okay, let me stick this key in the niche and I'm going to show you how to find these wires. You know, because all vehicles are going to have different colors. Okay, um, Okay, now you see the ignition. This was my ignition, which is the white wire. Okay, it's hard to work both of them, so I'm gonna try to uh, test light is um, to ground, clip to ground. No, you're gonna touch this wire, and you're gonna know it's ignition. See, when you turn the key forward, all the way for it, it come on. And watch how I bump the starter. Now you see how the light didn't go out? That means that it's ignition. If the light would have went out and came back on, that would mean it was accessory. Okay, so now this wire, the green wire, that's the starter wire. Now, how you know you have your starter? You Got to touch that. Touch the test light into that. You want to stick the key in the ignition, turn it forward, and it's not going to light up until you bump the starter. See how that? You bump up, and then it goes back out. And it only come up when you bump it. So that's the starter. Now the accessory wire, accessory wire, you want to touch that to the metal point right there. Okay. Now you want to, um, it's just like ignition. Turn the key all the way forward, but except when you start it, accessory gonna go out, cut out, and then cut back on. See if you notice the test light bulb, watch it. See, it goes out and come back on. Now accessory is just like ignition. Let me go back to accessory. It says accessory, the ignition stays on. It don't cut out. See that? You got it guys? So you turn it forward and you start it, ignition stays on during start and continue after start. Accessory, just like ignition, but you turn the key forward, you start it, accessory cuts out and then cut back on. Now normally for um for these vehicles, they have two accessories, which most vehicles do. Um except the new a lot of newer vehicles have their accessory one wire, but this vehicle had two accessories, one for the, um, the heater and the other one for like the radio and stuff like that. A lot of people like hooking up both. Let me take this key out of the ignition. God, oh man, Lord. Okay, now most uh, people like hooking up both accessories. I don't. I just want the, uh, the heater and stuff to come on when I remote start. I don't need the radio on. Cause say for instance, people got to leave their radio up loud and then they remote started and it's four or five o'clock in the morning neighbors trying to get some sleep you know and all they hear is some rap or whatever you got playing super loud you know and i don't think that's the way to do it i don't like a lot of people like theirs like that but i don't i just like the heater to come on heater to come on in the um so the heater to come on in the winter and the ac to come on in the summer when you remote started that's it you'll need all that other accessory so i just hook up the one accessory and that's for the heater and um it have two, it have two 12 volts down here, they're red, and then 
that green with the purple. I believe that's green with the purple. Uh, both of those are uh, power, 12 volts constant, but I don't use the um, I don't use the um, the thin one, the real one, because uh, that's for like other accessories in the car. I don't like using that one. I use the thicker wire, which is the uh, the green back there. If you can see, if you can see it, I like using those. So I believe that's green, Ugh, green with a purple. I like to use those bigger wires for the constant 12 volt. So uh, for my remote start, so. Let me get back to uh, doing the wires. I got this through my park. I believe my park lights on this one, guys. The park light is a little difficult. Normally, your park lights would be like um, coming out the switch, a positive or negative, which you could just tie your um, wire from the remote start into it. You know, if it's positive or negative, you know this. But this vehicle, I believe it requires you to. Um, cut that wire in half and then do a relay so you don't get no feedback all depends on if you have automatic lights or not i forgot but i'm gonna get ready to take that down now this was gonna be a little bit difficult for the guys if you've never done this before it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you but um i'm gonna try to uh explain it the best way i can I might write it out or uh, post a link where you can find it but you have to use a relay for these like i believe you have to cut two wires i, I believe but i would know when i take it down i would know how to uh which color if i take it down i would know what it needs so let me get to this and then i'll turn the camera back on and show you what i'm doing all right all right guys what i did was i drew the uh diagram out for you and i'm gonna explain it <clears throat> the best way i can let's see if you can see that Okay, basically in your light switch, you got a tan with a white wire, you got a black with a light green wire. Okay. And you get the initial relay. Okay, basically you're gonna take your um you're gonna cut this tan and white wire in half from your light switch. And on your relay, which is the um blue wire, if you have a harness, I will get used to um Learner, you should get used to learning your relay numbers instead of the colors because all colors on the relay harness might not be the same and sometimes you might not have a um, relay harness and you have to use uh, female e female clips to go to hook up to them so I would just learn a number so I'm going to say 30 so you're going to say 30 on the relay to the switch side of the cut tan and white wire and you're gonna take 87A, which is the middle of the relay wire. You're gonna take that into the other cut side of that tan and white wire. And then you're gonna take um, 87 off the relay. You're gonna tie that in to the black and uh, light green wire off there. This white, you're gonna put a. Um, you're gonna take that to the body of the car. Find you a ground somewhere in here, like somewhere metal. And you know, put a, um, a ring terminal on the end of that, and you want to uh, self tap a screw, and you're going to mount that in there. That's for your ground. And then you're going to take the other relay wire, 85. You're going to take that to the parking light, the parking light output from the remote start. So, whichever one is the positive, I don't know, it varies. Whatever your manual say is the parking light output wire, just make sure it's positive. And you're going to take that to the 85. And that's your, when you're most started, turn your parking lights on. And you know, when you cut it off, it's going to uh, turn them off. Then you hit unlock and lock, it's going to um, make them flash. Now, different vehicles is um, different. Now, normally you just, it's just one parking light color. It's either positive, I mean one parking light wire is either positive or negative. You find that wire and you uh you tie it to it that's it but this one is a little bit difficult because it, it requires a relay and i know the one that with the auto lights that requires two relays so that's a little bit more difficult but this gives you some kind of general idea of how to hook that up now let me show you 
let me show you a relay. This is the relay right here. And normally I get these um these color wires, you know, the the, the um the red, the white, yellow, and black. So you can see how to uh come on man, oh, it's windy out. So you can see uh, how to tie it in. But sometimes you might not have them move this is windy. Sometimes you might not have that color harness and you just had a relays. So if you look in close, you can see that you can see the uh the numbers on there. That's that's 30, 85, 86, 87, to 87A. And you might have to use the clips to go on here. Why? So it's best to not to learn the relays about color. It's best to learn about numbers. And then uh if I get enough of subscribers and you got a, a, enough of requests. I'll do a video showing exactly how a relay work, what it does, what you could use it for, and I'll go into more depth about it. But yeah, that's just a basic general idea of how to hook this up to the distant wire for 2001 for Winstar. Now, all the vehicles, it's not like this, especially the older vehicle, you can just tie right into it. So, yeah, let me start. Um, Hooking my um wire pre wire my kit, so I'm gonna open my kit up, my remote start kit up, and start pre wiring that. And you know, I might not show that part because that's kind of irrelevant. Because most remote starters have their own different colors, so you can't really go by those colors off the remote start. It's best to just read the manual, know what wire go to well. Okay, this is my ignition wire. This goes to this on the car. This is my door lock wire. This goes to that on the car. So yeah, you do it like that. And I know most of the times the um, the relays for, you might need relays for your door locks. If you hook them up and then they don't um, lock and unlock the wires, that mean that your signal to um, we coming out the remote start. So you might need to boost that um, that output up with a um, relay. So most likely, I mean they type B locks, they jump with the uh, test light. So the remote start should to uh, lock and unlock them no problem. And um. Yeah, another thing too before you get started, if you have an antenna for your remote starter, it's best to run that down first before you wire up your kit so you can test everything, your remote starter. And then another thing, I have to run the um I mean I can do this tackless, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna hook up a tack, which is under the hood. I'll show you that. You wanna go to one of the um wires off the coil pack, I sh I'll show you that in a minute. I gotta send that uh tack wire out. Well, I might just go tackless. You can program the star tackless off the uh, the voltage. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I want. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna do a tack or I'm gonna go tackless. Tackless, you can just program it to start off voltage. You know, you just you program that. You start the vehicle a few times. They read your voltage, then the start off voltage. But sometimes with the voltage, if it get cold and your voltage drop, you know, the most starter might have to start two or three times for the for the actually start it up. But tackless is gonna start just like that key every time. You know, even if the voltage drop is gonna boom until it starts, just like the key. But we'll get into that in a minute. Let me get this kit wired up and then I get back to you guys. Alright. Hey, what's going on guys? Um I end up hooking up the bulldog remote star. And it's not the output for the, um, I think the output for the accessory and the ignition is not working. It's not sending nothing out to the brain. So I just went on ahead and um, ordered the SkyTech, the A4 model. It's the um, the alarm, keyless entry, and remote start. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that on the van instead. I found all my wires. Now I just got to get the, um, the door trigger wire, which is in a, the back, the D pillar. I had to dial isolate that door trigger and run it to the front. I'll show you guys how to do that, wire that up. That's for it on for uh so it won't false trigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah, the bull I I kinda figured that bulldog alarm, I mean the remote star key to entry wasn't gonna work because the package was like slightly open, like it'd been banged around a lot. And then plus that thing is super old. Probably from like the 90s model. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one on there. So that way I won't have no problems. If I need any remotes or parts, I could just order it. 
you know, and they actually still make parts for this. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw this on there and be done with it. Uh, I'll let you guys know when I wire everything up, hook it up, and I'll go through everything and show you that it's working, remote start and everything. So, um, I got to go ahead and take that bulldog out of there. Kind of figured that wasn't going to work. But for five bucks, I just wanted to give it a try and see was it going to work, you know. But um, I'll get back to you guys in a minute. All right, guys. Since I'm hooking up the, um, the, the alarm and stuff now, and you want to hook it up to, like, the um, horn honk, you want your horn to honk when you... Um, Lock and unlock your door or when a uh, vehicle goes off. Someone set the alarm off. You want the, the horn to blow. The horn on the 2001 Ford Windstar is located at the bottom. I believe it's the uh, FEM module up there. To the left side of the, um, to the left side driver dash at the bottom. The horn hunk is, I believe is, what's the color is that? Orange with a red stripe. And how can you tell us the horn hunk? You take your clip to, you take your test light clip to ground and you take, you take your test light right here. And when you tap that wire right there, the horn should blow because it's a negative. And that's how you know you got your horn. Yep. Yeah, guys, on also on other vehicles, the horn is normally located in the steering column coming off those uh, wires in the steering column and it's easy to grab. Usually it's negative and can just do the same thing. On some vehicles, you can catch it at the BCM or the wire harness, though this module is kind of rarely low. But normally you could just grab it up at the uh, steering column on most vehicles, which makes it a lot easier. Um, and if I usually do it that way on certain vehicles, certain newer vehicles, you know, it's like sensitive to the test light and you don't want to set off like no, um, like no um, lights, or dash lights or engine codes. You can use a multimeter, take the multimeter, um, the positive to, um, take it to a positive wire and then you could just t uh, touch that wire with the negative and then once you blow the horn you can see the voltage goes up on the multimeter that's how you know that you found the horn wire you could do it that way also that's the way I prefer on most of the vehicles but there's an older vehicle I have to worry about anything like no engine no dash lights or nothing like that so just do it that way alrighty Hey guys, to get the, um, I think I'm going to go tackless because on the, um, I was going to do, uh, take it to attack wire on the outside when I was using the bulldog, but the bulldog didn't work out for me because it had a um, bad ignition output or whatever. It wasn't sending out no power through that way. So I ended up using the sky tech as you guys see. And Skytax are, are pretty good with uh, running tackless uh, on those. So I'm going to do tackless on those. So I'll be going to be sending out my ground wire for the siren. I always ground, I always ground my ground wire in the inside and then send it out so I can tap straight into the siren. I don't like grounding under the hood for the sirens because it tend to, um, it tend to rust and stuff like that. You know, and then like, if somebody wants to get up under your hood or whatever, you know, and you, I just cut the ground wire and it's disconnected. The ground wire, they would have to come in the inside to, you know, take that ground off. Uh, but anyway, to get into, um, to send this wire out here, some, some vehicles you have to, uh, drill a hole and then use the, um, use like a, um, what's it called? The drum it, the little, uh, round rubber thing. So you can stick the, um, um, the wire through. You know, you drill a hole, you put the rubber, uh, Grime it in there, then you stick the wire through that. But on these, it's like real simple. On the vans, this is what I normally do. It's a, you lift this back right here, and then this rubber gummy just pop this out. And then see this little um this little tiny opening right here? 
You can stick the wire through there, out, through the hole into the firewall to the engine. And that way you ain't have to worry about drilling a hole on this vehicle. Most vehicles I like this is easy, but on this one, you don't only have to worry about it. Just do that and you can't lose. All right, let me get this siren hooked up and tie it in. Then I'll get to showing you guys. I have to, I'm gonna do the door trigger last so I can show you how to do it. The, the door trigger on these are, um, is back in the, um, the D pillar, the back of the vehicle. Normally, if you do a, a regular a vehicle, another vehicle, you could just tie it to the uh, dome light. Like the dome, let me show you. The dome light is right here. At the bottom, just tie it to there on uh, other vehicles or just tie it to the dough trigger and you don't have to worry about it. But on this vehicle, if you tie it to that, it's going to false trigger. So you might be up in the middle of the night, just hear your alarm going off and think somebody bothering it or messing with it. But no, yo, it'll be false triggering, thinking that the door is open or something like that. So you have to go to the back of the vehicle into the D pillar and you're going to have to cut that wire put a, a diode one amp diode in between i'm gonna show you guys how to do it and i believe take the wire on the opposite side of the band um but i get into that though i'll show you i'll show you uh guys how to do that but let me get back to sticking uh putting the siren and stuff on then um i'll get ready to wrap it up and show you guys all right okay uh it's these little tabs. You can take a uh, one of these. What I was telling y'all about a panel uh, upholstery remover. I call them panel poppers. And it's four little tabs uh, mm -hmm. up here by the back BC. I mean by the back the uh, dome light on the van. Then if you pull this down, you can see that. Um, see that. I don't know if you see me let it focus in. It's a brown with a pink wire. That's the wire you want for your um, your, um dome light, for your door trigger. And then I'm gonna show you how to um, put the uh, diode on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a diagram to show you. And I put that up there. So let me get this done and run this wire to the front. And then I'll show you guys the wire diagram. It's real simple. Like I said, most vehicles you don't have to do that, but on this one they want you to diode isolate it. So I'm gonna do that. All right. Okay, now that's the um when you cut it in half like that. See that that band right there, the silver band. You want that facing away from the light. You know, you want the wire on the band side. What that do is the diode does is let current pass through in one direction. So that way you won't get no uh, back feed and alarm be going off in the middle of the night. You think somebody hitting it or breaking into it. So that's what that's why you have to use the diode. You can find them at Radio Shack or order them offline, Amazon, eBay. You know, and actually I ordered like a whole roll of them. I just I got this in my arsenal. So whenever I need them, I just use them. But yeah, let me uh I'm gonna, you're gonna tie the uh like I say gonna tie the wire to the on, on this side. And you're gonna run that to the front of the vehicle. And I'm gonna show you how to test for the door trigger too. Once I get the wire up there. And with this, you can hit the uh, ends with a little solder if you want to. But I usually tape them tight and wire tie them and run to the front. And I never have any problem because I mean, it's nobody gonna be back here messing around or pulling the pulling the wire or nothing like that. Like I said. I, I done did vehicles like this and then in the last year, no problem, never any issue of the wire coming off or messing up or anything of that nature. But yeah, let me get to running this wire to the front and I'll show you how to test for the door trigger and I'll try to drop a diagram for you guys um, so you better understand it. All right. Let's see, when I'm done taping the wire up, that's how it looked. I taped it up real good, nice and tight. I mean, you can't snatch that or pull that that loose. And then I take the wire going all the way to the front. That's going to go all the way to the front. So let me get that ran to the front. Then I'll get back to you guys. Alrighty. Okay, now that's the wire that I um, 
that I sent back from to the back. That's my door trigger wire. I ran it all the way through from the back. The D pillar. The light I showed you out. Now to test the door trigger, you want to take your test light clip to ground. And then your test light here, when you touch and you and you like I got the door open right now, but I latched it. For those who don't know, you can uh push this all the way back, that last the door, and that closed this the door and the dorm light is off. Okay. Now right now with this door closed, this wire should read positive. That's how you know it's the door trigger. Okay. Now you see that light, that light is on. Now when I unlatch this door, it should um it should go out, sending a negative signal, and then that's the that's how you know that that's the uh the door trigger. Let me cut it off. Oh, that's this door. Need a test light hooked up. Hello, oh, I gotta find a way. See that? Uh, I latched the door. Test light is out. Now let me latch the door back. Show you guys. The light should come back on when I latch the door. I'm trying to latch it with. Uh, I don't have a screwdriver. Let me try to, uh, trying to use some wire, wire cutters to latch this door. It's hard to go back. Okay, it's hard to last it, but you get the you get the point where I showed you that this the uh the door trigger wire. So if the you take the test light to ground and take the other part of the test light to the wire, it should read positive when the door is closed. And then once you open the door, it should send the test light should go out, it should send out a negative signal that you know that the door is open. That's how it's gonna go out. That's how it works with the alarm. On most four vehicles the wire, the door trigger wire is positive, but on this one, on the Ford Windstar, the door trigger is negative. Alrighty, so let me get start uh, hooking this stuff up, and I'll show you the, okay, look, hold on, before I do that, let me show you this diagram. This is the diagram, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see the, how you can wire it up in the back. Okay, this is the door, the, uh, the dome light in the back. You want to cut this wire in half, put the diode in between there, and see that band? You want to take the alarm negative door trigger, whatever color it is on your system, on this system it is green. So you want to take that green wire on the band side of the door trigger, on the band side. See, you want the band facing away from the dome light in the back. After you cut the wire, then you want to take this on the, on the band side, okay? So, when, like I said, what that diode do, does is it send that current flow in one direction so you won't get false triggering. And you can find those on Amazon, eBay, Radio Shack, you know. So I just had a big roll of them for over the time and haven't used them all, you know. But there you go. That's how you um, run that door trigger from the back. Okay, now up under the hood, I sent my ground and my side wire out. I grounded in the inside, so I won't have to ground on the outside and deal with any rust or you no know, stuff not working. Which I mean, that's how they used to do it, and then you'd never have any problem like that either. But it takes a while. But I just did it in the inside. I like to do it in the inside. It's just something I do. So, okay, I mounted. You look for a secure spot and non moving parts to uh, mount your siren on. And make sure the wire's not going over nothing important and stuff that's got to be moved. Like on this location, it's on the driver. I've mounted my siren on the driver's side fender with two self tapping screws. And the fuse box is up under here, but the siren, if you want to get take the top off, you just move the siren up like that, and it's out the way. And then on your wire, you want to you want to run a black wire loom on there, and um, wire tire so the wire's not um, like hanging nowhere. And then that's a secure location. So make sure you want to make sure everything nice and neat and out the way. You know, you don't want to stuff running over here, over top of the motor, you know, where it's heat and you risk stuff like fires or, you know, something happened, something bad happened. Nothing good can come from it, put it like that. 
Alrighty, so let me get back to um, to what I was doing, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up for you guys in a minute and show you how everything looked. Alrighty. All right, guys, uh, I'm coming to an end. So um, this is my alarm. Before I put everything up, I make sure everything's nice and neat. Everything is working. You know, I program it, and then I put everything back. Okay, now you remember the 556U, the bypass module, the one that's needed for the um, for the transponder, so the remote start because the uh, vehicle has a chip chip in the key. Um, this is the, the the 556U module. This you want to make sure this out the way, mounted nice and neat because remember it has a key in here, so you want that out the way of anybody's reach. Okay, then see uh, everything is like like um, routed nice and neat, wire tied. And everything and um, the box right here so everything is going it's wire strap going up in a pattern you know out the way of, of, of reach for anybody and that's gonna be put up there in the back up wire strap the mounted so it's out the way nothing's loose so if somebody had to go over it or you have to take it to the shop in an emergency or somebody have to work on it it'll be easy to work on you don't have to worry about Tell us, my oh, they need to take it back to the line because they did this. This stuff is messed up. Why is all the spaghetti? And you know, it's, it's not right. You know how other shops do or people do in general. No, not to point anybody out, but it's just the way it is. Okay. And on that 556 U margins for you, you don't know. I didn't actually show the opening of the box and putting the key in there because I'm going to show you the diagram. That's the diagram for it. On the back of that module is four screws. You're gonna take them four screws off. You're gonna slide the key into the box, put that back on, and uh, mount those four screws back in. And all you need to hook up off this box is four wires. For this vehicle, you want to hook up the red, which is the uh, constant 12 volt. You want to hook up the blue, which is the status output ground for off the remote starter. So when the remote starts hitting the negative signal, turning the box on, only doing remote start. And then you want your constant ground. You know, and for those who don't um try to find a metal spot to ground with a self-tapping screw and make sure it's cleaned off. Or like on here, I found the solid spot and I just used that bolt. I cleaned it off real good behind it. Put a, uh, I mean, you can put the terminals already on there, then you uh, ground it. So that's a secure ground for me. And now I haven't mounted my remote, I mean, uh, tripping up right here, lips dry. Uh, I haven't mounted um, my shock sensor yet because I usually put that back together first, the alarm, I mean, the, uh, the unit back together first. And then I mount my uh, shock sensor up under the bottom so you can easily get to, to adjust the sensitivity. Cause you know, some customers, they say, uh, people in general, you know, they say, oh, I want this, um, I want a sensitive in case anybody mess with it. Then later on they come back, oh, that's too sensitive. I usually mount it under the bottom where they can get to it so they can adjust it how they want. And, but you want to look for a place that's solid. Like a lot of times I mounted near the steering, steering column or a stiff harness so that it could pick up vibration easy. Something that pick up vibration, something that's not moving. Like if you just mounted on some swinging wires, it's not gonna too much pick up a vibration. It, it, it will a little bit, but I wanna mount it on something stiff that's close to the like a uh, frame or, or a metal bracket that will pick up vibration through in the vehicle. So that way you won't have to turn it up as sensitive and then it'll cover most of the vehicle. But on this one, since this, it's my vehicle. I'm, I just bought to sell it. I'm putting a uh, alarm remote starter heaters entry on. I'm just gonna mount it up out the way. I'm gonna turn the shock sensor maybe half or a little less, and then do it that way. All right, guys. Let me put this back together, and then I show I show you everything work. Well, let me I can show you everything work now. I haven't programmed it yet. I'm going to program it to automatically run for 20 minutes. I want it to uh, auto arm when you get out the car and lock the door. And I want the sirens to make a chirping sound when I remote start the vehicle. And also I'm gonna turn the, turn it on, uh, turn where you stick the key in the ignition. As soon as you uh, turn the key for it, the, uh, to start the vehicle, the door's locked. So that's like a safety feature when you get inside. 
you know, you start the car, it's called ignition, ignition lock, auto ignition lock. I'm going to turn that feature on too. And yeah, I'm going to turn that on. So let me show you everything work for a second. Lock, unlock, work. The door locks is working. And then I'm going to hit remote start. You're going to hold this button down on this system. A lot of systems are different. Hold it down. It's going to flash twice. You're going to hear the uh, parking lights chirp. Got the heat coming on, on already. Uh, everything remote starts. Everything is working. To turn it off, you want to uh, press this button twice. And it goes off. You just got to hold it down until you get two solid flashes. And on this one, you have you don't have to worry about nobody stealing this vehicle when it's remote started. Because let me show you if somebody try to hop in. Let me, let me start it back up. If somebody think that this vehicle running and they bust the window out or somehow they get in and they don't have the key. And you know to put the car in drive, you have to press the brake. So as soon as they press the brake, the vehicle's going to go off. And if its arm is going to uh, turn off and the alarm is going to go off. So preventing anybody from taking off with the vehicle. And when you when you come to your car and you want to get in your car, let me show you. Let me remote start it. If you walk into your vehicle and you have the key, just put it in the ignition, turn it forward, and press the brake, and you're ready to go. If you notice it didn't turn off that time, that's because you're, the owner has the key. And the car is reading the key, so it's not going to turn off. If you try to do that without a key, somebody try to jump in here, go anywhere, it's going to cut off. That's a safety feature. Okay. Now, you see how when I was remote starting, and... You hear the parking lights flat. I mean, you see the parking lights trip four times before it start. I like to turn the feature on in a programming mode that when you're remote started, it make four chirping noises. So that way you can hear. Doo, doo, doo. I just like to hear it. Sometimes I don't like to watch the parking lights. When you hear a noise, you know that it's going to remote start. That's just something I like to do. Everybody don't like that, but I do so. And uh, another thing, too, you hook that up you, when you put that key in the box. See that ring right there? It runs up here, around, you just, it's this loop. You just put it around the uh, the key tumbler and run it down. And that's what signals a signal, signal for the remote start. So let me get ready to put this back up. Remember guys, make sure everything's taped, routed out the way, like away from the steering column, like no moving parts and, and make sure it's wire tied. And neat neat as you possibly can get it so see everything work now I'm gonna put this back together and then show you guys just a final result I guess of the dash and everything being put back together but basically everything done up under the hood I ran my door trigger uh, from the back the horn work lock unlock work just got to mount the shock sensor somewhere and then yeah I'm basically done so let me put this dash back to you up, then I'll uh, wrap it up for you guys. All right, later. Okay, guys, I mounted my um, box up. Just wanted to show you guys before I put the uh, panels and stuff back up. I uh, mounted my module, well, actually my box, the brain of the alarm. See, everything mounted, strapped in there nice and neat, not going nowhere. Not you know, worry about it dangling while you're driving or hearing any noises from the box movement. So everything is in there nice and neat. See that strapped up long. And you look up under it, nothing's hanging. Everything's nice and neat. Box is way up there. Thing strapped, tied down. Nice and neat. So now I'm going to go ahead and mount everything up. I mount my shock sensor. I did put the panels back together and I'm going to be done. And I'll show you guys the result after I program it. And then I want to show you when I remote started too. You can hear the, uh, the chirp noises and everything work. So let me put this camera down, finish up, then I'll uh, turn it back on for you guys. All right, guys. 
finished, put everything back together, mounted my shock sensor, and I'm basically done. And remember when I was telling you guys to, uh, said like when you, um, like when our remote started, I like to uh, program the chirps in there. This is it. Like watch, okay, now watch our remote started. Turn the chirps on. Yeah, so everything is done and complete. Let me turn it off. Everything is done and complete, nicely done. Make sure all the screws and stuff back in my panels. Um, everything is working. The shock sensor is what I uh, wanted at. Locking and unlocking, automatically locking by itself. The ignition locks work. Everything is programmed. I didn't show that because each procedure is different for uh, each system, different system out there, different brand of system sold. But if um, if you decide to do it, just please use caution. Make sure uh, everything is done neatly. Pay attention. Tape it up. Look on the internet if you need help, or I'll be happy more than happy to uh, assist you guys with any comments you have, any help you need. Uh, and if you don't feel like you, you can do it, just take it to a shop or have somewhere, someone that know what they're doing, do it. So, um, yeah, that's the end of my video. So please don't forget to subscribe, like, post comments below, and turn the notification bell on uh, for future videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'm out.